Hey, I'm Patty from AldermanFarms.net and Alderman Farms on YouTube. I'm super excited to announce my new revised and expanded Easy Sourdough Start to Finish eBook. You don't have to be intimidated by making sourdough bread. With my Easy Start to Finish instructions that will help you make the great tasting homemade sourdough bread at home, even if you don't have store-bought yeast, you can grab your copy in the link below. I'm gonna be making the one loaf of sourdough bread. It's found on page 12 of the ebook. And first we're gonna get started with a half a cup of sourdough starter. This starter has been fed about 12 hours ago. And so I like to use a hungry starter when I start making my bread. Then next we're gonna put 3 fourths cup of warm water. And for video purposes, I'm also going to be using yeast in this recipe. Um, in the ebook, it does uh, give you the amounts of yeast to use to make your rise a little bit faster. But for since and but it will not affect the outcome if you don't use yeast. It will just take longer to rise. But to make the video go a little faster, I am using yeast in here. Then you'll put two tablespoons of sugar and one and a half teaspoons of salt. And get that stirred in good. Also, I wanna say you could be using your stand mixer if you wanted to. And then a fourth of a cup of oil. I may have missed saying the uh, one and a half teaspoons of salt, I'm not sure, but anyway. It has uh, sourdough starter, warm water, sugar, yeast, salt, and oil. And you just wanna have that mixed together a little bit. And then next you'll start with your flour. All the mixing up of sourdough is really not that different from mixing up just regular yeasted bread. The difference is adding your sourdough starter in. And that gives it that wonderful Wonderful aroma. All right, I put one cup of flour in. You're gonna use a total of about three cups. And I'm just gonna put about another half a cup in and get this stirred together. And when it starts getting a little too thick, but not, not real runny, that's when you'll have to put your hands in. Go ahead and add the rest of that half a cup. Sourdough bread is really simple to make. Um, and you'll find lots of simple, easy recipes in the ebook. Um, I don't know why some people are very intimidated by sourdough bread, but you'll find my recipes in the book simple. You'll, the ingredients or the ingredients that you have in, at your house. And like I said, even if you don't have yeast, you can still make sourdough bread. All right, this is my last cup, and I'm just gonna add this gradually. That was about a half a cup I added in, and I'm just gonna kinda move this around in the bowl to try and get the flour kinda up under my dough. And now I'm gonna go in and knead with my hands. A lot of people knead their dough out on their counter, and if that's the way you're used to kneading dough, that's fine. I feel like it makes less mess inside the bowl, so I just keep it in the bowl. And I'm just turning it over and pushing it down. Each time, turn it over, push it down, and pull in each side, push it down. And as you're doing that, you're actually kneading your dough and you're incorporating more flour. Oops. I also tell you in the book there's some I have uh, there's some quick tips in the book um, because you know in different environments are different uh, you know I put in the recipe for three cups of flour sometimes you may not need the whole three cups of flour sometimes you may need more 
just when I think I'm gonna need more flour because it's so humid down here in Mississippi, I end up using a little less flour. So you kinda of go with the feel of your dough. And that's something you'll learn over time. If you have too much flour in your dough, it'll make it a very, very stiff dry loaf. And if you don't have enough, it'll be a dough that you can't really work with that may not rise like it should. And this is good exercise, a good workout. <laughs> also, you need to use care if you are using a mixer to be checking your dough often. What I kind of use as a gauge is so as the dough starts pulling away and forming a ball and not sticking to the sides anymore, you need to check it because you can, it's very easy to over mix your dough in, in a, in a um, mixer and also mix in too much flour. So you have to, you have to be very, very watchful. It's, a di it's different than when you're doing it with your hands and you're feeling how the dough is. You see, I'm, it's coming together nicely, but when I touch it like that, it's still, it's still real sticky. So, I'm gonna keep incorporating my flour. I'm down to about a fourth of a cup of flour left in my cup now. And I'm just pushing down. I'm not turning it right now. I'm just kinda working that flour in. And then I'll turn it completely, uh, fold it in half. And then I'll start my folding again. There's just, there's different techniques to making bread and to kneading your dough. And you'll need to find what's easiest for you. This is what I have found is easiest for me. Now I'm just wiping my dough around, uh, getting flour on all sides. And I'll go back to kneading it a little bit, just pushing my fingers into it, just kind of flattening it out. And as it gets a little sticky is when I'll fold it over, that top piece over, and keep kneading. And that's what people, you know, when I remember when I first started doing bread, it was a little intimidating thinking, oh, you have to knead it for five minutes or for 10 minutes. And it's really, as you're doing it, you're, 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 you're feeling your way of what, what you need, what more you need to do, what more flour you need to add. You see, I've gotten, it's kind of uh, floury still on top here. I don't want it floury right now. If I wanted to make a dough, uh, a loaf that had the flour look on it, I would accomplish that at, at my second rise. I would do that, uh, put a little flour on my dough. But right now I'm trying to just incorporate the flour into the dough. All right, I, I am going to my fist now. I'm just pushing it down with my fist and I'll just turn it, half turn, and I'll do a half turn again. And it's picking up the rest of that flour in the bottom of the bowl. And sums up on my side, so I'm gonna scrape it down and turn it over. And so, a nice, nice dough, and it'll be doing, it'll do some work while it is rising, and it will really come together nicely. And pick up any last little bits of flour that's in there and work it in. But if you can see, now it's not so sticky, and it's bouncing back when I push it with my finger. So it's ready to rise. So what I do, I'll run my fingers around my bowl to get any little big little hunks off of there. And I'll just dump that right there. And then you wanna take some oil. And you're gonna oil your bowl really good. In fact, that's not quite enough. A 
teaspoon of oil as will work. And you'll rub that all around your bowl, all the way up to the top. And then you're going to set your dough in your bowl. And I like, I push it down and then I turn it over. You see, I've got an oil coating on the top and then I push it down again. And then I'll cover this with saran wrap. You could use a dish towel if you'd like. Just whatever you have. And I cover my bowl and I'll let this rise until it doubles in volume. Um, now, depending on if you use yeast or not in your sourdough bread, and it depends on how much yeast you add too. It will take anywhere from an hour to 12 hours to rise. If I'm using, if I'm making my dough, if I'm making my bread without the, the, with the, without the yeast, uh, I usually make my dough up at night and then I'll put it into loaves in the morning where it can rise overnight. Okay, now after your dough has risen, you're gonna remove your plastic wrap and you're just gonna knead it down a little bit with your hands. I like to turn it over a bit like that. You can see how the texture has changed through that rising. And what you do is you just take it and uh, the way I do it is I take it and rock it in my hands because I like a nice rounded top to my bread. And so it's gonna grow however what shape you put it in. And so I just rock it and I pinch it together like that underneath. And there was plenty of oil around the edges of my dough. If there wasn't, I would have put a little oil on my hands, but you see, my hands are plenty oily from the bread. And I'll just rock it one more time, just to get a nice smooth texture on top. Oh, I didn't spray my bread pan. You gotta spray your bread pan. Let me rock it one more time. And I'm, I'm pinching it together good and hard under the bottom. And it's okay that it doesn't fill up the bread pan right now. It will, it was gonna grow and rise. Now, if you would rather a flat top loaf, what you would do instead of doing what I just did, after you knead it down a few times, put it in your bread pan and then flatten it down. And then that way it'll grow up pretty much the same and not have the rounded top. I prefer to have the rounded top loaf. So we'll let this rise sitting here on the counter for about another hour. Uh, if you're not using yeast, that can go from anywhere from four to 12 hours. All right, now that my bread has risen, I'm gonna bake it at 350 for 30 minutes. I have in the book to 25 to 30 minutes. It's always best to check it a little early just to make sure, because all ovens are different. The bread turned out nicely. It had a good, nice rise on it. One thing I'd like to share with you is that if you only have one or two people in your family, what you can do is use the mini loaf pans and put the dough in it and go ahead and bake it and everything and then put it in the freezer. You know, use one loaf and then take out a loaf as you need it. Uh, one thing I like to do is put a little butter on top of mine it makes it where it doesn't have a hard crust on it. So I used to, I do this right when it comes out before I take it out of the pan. So. Just a little bit like that. And then I like to take it directly out of the pan as soon as I get it out the oven because I don't like it to sweat in the pan. Now, I hope you've seen by this video that sourdough bread isn't hard to make. It is a process that you go through, but just like with anything, it's definitely worth the effort and the weight on making sourdough bread. If you would like to make sourdough bread at your house, click down in the link below and get easy sourdough start to finish.